Would you please stand and sing this hymn with us? So worship the King. Let's sing together. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient Thank you and good morning. It's great to see you here and it's my privilege to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. We say together with the psalmist, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. If you consider yourself a guest or if you're watching online and new to Wyuka or the Buckhead area, we especially welcome you this morning. We're honored that you've joined us and to all our members, thank you for your faithfulness during these heavily traveled summer months. We're excited about joining together for worship this morning, and we wish each of you a happy Sunday. If you're here in the room and new to the area, there's a connection card located in the seat pocket in front of you. We'd love you to take a moment, fill that out, and place it in the offering baskets later this morning or give it to one of our staff members following the service. If you're watching online, you can text the word welcome to the number on the screen, and we'd love to drop you a note to thank you for joining us. And whether you're in the room or online, you can use all the different tools related to digital communication to share your prayer concerns, to participate in online giving. If you're interested in having a conversation about church membership or baptism, we'd be more than honored to have that conversation with you. You can text the word JOIN to the number on the screen as well. We are looking forward to a great time in worship. This is an exciting week leading up to Kids Adventure Weekend. In fact, in your worship guide, you'll notice there's a prayer countdown. We hope that you'll join Angie and the children's ministry team in praying for Kids Adventure Weekend next week. And we'll be joining together in worship as a culmination of Kids Adventure Weekend. It's going to be a great time to be together. Also, let me remind you one other time that this afternoon at 2 o'clock here in the Peachtree Room, we are invited to join with our friends at Rise Again Ministries in celebrating Pastor Appreciation Day, Pastor Donnelly Sawyer's uh, eighth anniversary. In fact, some of our friends from Rise Again have joined us. Pastor Sawyer's here. will be reading scripture later in the service. Pastor Sawyer, not everyone here will be able to come this afternoon. So together, we say happy anniversary. We're grateful for your long friendship with uh, Wayuka, and we're looking forward to a great year for you and the fellowship at Rise Again. Congratulations on your anniversary. 
It is good to see you. One of the most important things we do as followers of Jesus is join together in a spirit of worship and lift our voices in song. Join together now with uh, Jamila as we share in our call to worship and then with Rick as we continue singing hymns of praise. Good morning. Please join me in our call to worship. God calls us to worship and we come. Some with laughter and songs of joy. God calls us to worship and we come. Some from a sense of obligation or habit. God calls us to worship and we come. Some with hearts heavy with grief. God calls us to worship and we come. Some with eagerness and enthusiasm. Some with distraction or exhaustion. As God's dearly loved children, we bring all our joy and pain hurt and hope into this place of spirit giving grace, love, and hope. Amen. Sorry, would you please stand? alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of christ i live ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand 
until he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. You may be seated. Amen. What a sweet message. Well, this past week has been kind of a crazy week in my life. I um, discovered on Monday that Jules is going to get to have surgery this coming Thursday. And that's also the first day of Kids Adventure Weekend in my life. And I went, okay, God, I'm surprised. I know you're not, and we'll be okay. And so I started thinking, how can I get myself together? Because I was a little panic stricken. So I called the doctor's office and I said, can I get all of her medicine? And can I have it at my house before I even, we even do the surgery? It'll just help me be calmer. And so I went to the pharmacy and I walked in the drugstore at Walgreens. And y'all, there was rows of medicine. Because, you know, I had to get a little of this and a little of that off the counter. And I got overwhelmed at looking just at all of those medicines. And it started making me think about Pastor Barry talking this week about medicine for a gloomy spirit. I had a little bit of that this week myself. And so I decided I might ask Miles to come and help me today for my children's moment because I wanted to see if he knew much about medicines. I needed a little bit of help. So, Miles, here's my question for you. If I were to have a headache, what is the best picture right here of all of these that are going to be on the screen? Which is the best one that would help you? An apple, crutches, or Tylenol? Which one would help you? I think you should go with the Tylenol. Okay, all right, the Tylenol. All right, you're one for one. I got a couple more. All right, let's see about this one. If you were to have a stomach ache, which one of these would help you? A cast, some mouthwash, or Pepto-Bismol? Pepto-Bismol. All right, you're two for two. You might be able to help me out then. All right, number three, if you were to cut your finger open, would you need some orange juice? Because, you know, the fruits and vegetables are good for you. A Band-Aid or some Tums? Which one do you think? The Band-Aid. The Band-Aid. All right, you're three for three. You're doing great. All right, let's see about, this is the tricky one. If I got into poison ivy, would I need some toothpaste, some eye drops, or some calamine lotion? Which one would you pick? I think I'd pick the calamine lotion. The pink calamine lotion. You're right. Miles, you did pretty well. You could probably help me out with all my medicines as well, too. Well, you know, as Pastor Barry is going to encourage us about good medicine for our soul, there are so many answers in the Bible, and it can help us feel good, too. Sometimes I get overwhelmed when I look at my Bible and think of trying to find a passage that would help me. You know, when I got home and I started looking at all those medicines, there was five prescription medicines I had to pick up. And I started looking at them and I thought, I'm going to have to sit down and read them and pay attention and find a quiet spot to make sure I give her the right medicine for what's ailing her. Well, it made me think about my Bible. I have to find a quiet spot, sit down, and pay attention to what the Bible tells me to figure out what's ailing me. And so I asked Miles if he could find a couple of scripture passages too and read them for us about things that might be ailing us. So here's our first one that's from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. And then he has another one for us, too. It's from Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So church family, I'm not sure what's ailing you, but I do want to encourage you to remember that there are lots of precious treasures in our scripture to help us find things that are ailing us to help our heart. So I encourage you to find some time, be quiet, and sit down and be able to read it. So let's pray and talk to God together. 
Father God, thank you for this sweet reminder about there are medicines to help our body, but God, there's also this precious book called the Bible that you've shared with us to help our ailing hearts. So God, I pray that you will help us to remember to find that quiet time in that place to be able to find the scripture passage to help us to remember how much you love us and care about us. God, thank you for our time together. And God, as we continue in our worship, may it please you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You can remain seated as we sing and declare these words concerning God's love. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing love, the Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has bought me life. I know that it is finished. Good morning. The scripture lesson is coming from Second Corinthians chapter five, <clears throat> verse fourteen and fifteen. For the love of Christ constrained us. God, we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Would you please stand as we sing this last verse? I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. You may be seated. Good morning. Please follow along the invitation to the offering. God has shown us the meaning of generosity and the beautiful diversity of his creation in the overflowing love of Jesus Christ, in the never-ending gift of the Holy Spirit, God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to serve others with joy, 
to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and what is ours to give. And now please bow your heads for a word of prayer. Our Father, we are not our own. We belong to you. You have created us and given us life anew. O oh God, our creator, savior and sustainer, we extend our arms and open our hands to present our offerings to you. We make these gestures to display outwardly our hearts overflowing gratitude for all your gifts. Receive these gifts and through them bring life and hope to many. In the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, sing my soul the ancient song and lend your highest praise to him who is the king of old and dwells in endless days how resplendent his glory how majestic his name now to the uncreated one oh let the anthem raise oh worship him our father god the spirit and the word who fashioned all things from his joy and saw that it was good. What perfection of friendship, what communion we shared. But choosing death, we fell from life aside the guilty pain. Now hear my soul, the gospel song, attend the joyful news. For Christ has come, the perfect son, his father's will to choose. In our place he did suffer, in our place became sin. The death of death, the death of Christ, who stands alive again. of the risen Lord, oh, hear the call to go. Into the world we have been sent as messengers of hope. Christ alone be our treasure, Christ alone our reward. Come bid the nation sing with us the praises of the Lord.
have you ever had just a tremendously bad day and all of a sudden there's an encouraging word or maybe a positive encounter or maybe something humorous happens and it changes the entire trajectory of your day. I remember as a young minister getting my first taste of some of the troubled nature of the local church. I'd had an easy ride and all of a sudden there were people that I loved dearly that were fussing and fighting with each other. It's very discouraging to me. I was still a single young pastor, hadn't met Amanda yet, so she wasn't there to cheer me up. I stopped by my grandparents and I was just down in the the pits thinking, do I really want to do this the rest of my life? And I went into my grandparents' home and on their Magnavox TV, which was their new edition in color, because previous to that, that only had the Philco black and white that got Channel 6 and 13 out of Birmingham. <laughs> they were watching a program that was featuring the ineffable George Burns. Now, I could go into great detail. My grandparents had a car tag, a vanity plate on the front of their little 1966 Volkswagen Fastback that said, George and Gracie because in their younger days they liked to dance and so their friends called them George and Gracie just like George Burns so George Burns was I don't remember all that he said but I listened about five minutes and I had tears in my eyes from laughter and all of a sudden I'd forgotten about all the fussing and fighting and worries of the previous day now somebody asked me once when I shared this story what did George Burns say I don't remember all of it some things George Burns said you can't repeat what I do remember is the last line was he said, when I was a little boy, the Dead Sea was only sick. <laughs> and why I remembered that, I'm not really sure. But today's passage I'm going to read in just a moment has to do with how God lifts our spirits and how that contributes to our capacity for living the good life. First, it's really good to be here, good to see you here, good to have guests with us, grateful to have our friends from Rise Again. Failed to mention earlier, be praying for um, Ashley Guthas. They've had a great week of student camp, great to see our students back home safely and hearing wonderful stories about their adventures. Ashley was invited several months ago to be the guest preacher today at the Fellowship Church in Americus, Georgia. So we're very proud and excited for Ashley and preaching for our our fellow minister, Wendy Peacock, down at Fellowship, uh, Wendy Joyner, down at uh, Fellowship uh, Church in uh, Americus, Georgia. Grateful to have a lot of other guests with us. I don't usually call guests out, but Philip Slynn Poole are dear friends. Some of you may remember Philip from being with uh, uh, Baptist Press Agencies, Associated Baptist Press. Philip retired at uh, Samford as Communication Public Relations Coordinator. His wife, Shalynn, longtime children's minister down at Deer Meadows in Florida. We served together where she was youth minister alongside me in Birmingham and then retired over at the church at Shelby Crossings, I think, in Birmingham. Always good to have them with us. Great to see Andrew and Bethany Barnhart slip in. They're home from the mission field. Guys, welcome back home to Wyuka. Glad that you're here this morning. We look forward to hearing more stories from them uh, later on and just really grateful that they are here this morning. All throughout the summer, we're talking about what is the good life? What does it mean when someone says, I'm living the good life? Sometimes they say it for real, sometimes sarcastically. Back during the height of the pandemic, I was reaching out to someone who I heard was having a tough time, and I said, how are you doing? And they responded very saying, well, just living the good life. Well, they weren't really living the good life because life had mounded up and rained on them a double portion of affliction. So what does it mean to really live the good life? Well, a good life is a life that's grounded in faith in our good God. A good life requires that we get good rest. A good life requires good friends. A good life requires a good work to do. A good life helps us to celebrate the freedom God gives to us. A good life, and we'll talk about it more and more throughout the morning, involves taking on a spirit of good cheer even in the most difficult times. Proverbs 17.22 in the New International Version says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I love the way Peterson words that in the translation of the message. Let me read it again from the message. A cheerful disposition is good for your health, but gloom and doom leave you bone tired. Have you ever been bone tired? Have you ever been slipping down off the knot to the bottom of the well of life? A good life is grounded in faith in a good and loving God. And if God has things under control, it ought to bring us good cheer and encouragement even in the most difficult times. There's a biblical prescription 
that's just as important to our physical health as it is to our spiritual health and our mental health, and it's a medicine for the human soul that cannot be purchased at any pharmacy. The Bible affirms in several places the importance of a worshiper, of a believer, of a follower of Jesus, taking on a cheerful heart, a cheerful face, becoming a cheerful giver. But in various texts in the Proverbs, it is emphasized the importance of adopting a cheerful heart or a joyful heart or a glad heart. And the meaning is pretty straightforward. It's a cheerful disposition. It's a sense of humor in difficult times that contributes to our good health. Followers of Jesus are not exempt from the troubles and trials of life. We experience stress, sometimes even at a greater level than others. We carry heavy burdens. We experience anxiety. We can even be afflicted with depression. And if it's not kept in check, these stressors will have a negative impact on both our spiritual and physical health. People of faith aren't exempt from such things. Negative thoughts, negative emotions feed the dis-ease. But a positive attitude and a strong faith becomes a catalyst for healing. There are at least three reasons I think this passage is extremely relevant for those of us who live in 2022. First, we have a lot of grief. Some of us have personal grief, some traumatic grief, some of us just the corporate grief of the age. Grief over those now departed. Grief over divorce in the family. Grief over those who are seriously ill. Grief over the predicament posed by the pandemic. But it's because that we're filled with grief, if we're not careful, that grief becomes the dominant force in life. We need the medicine of a cheerful heart. There's toxic negativity. It's running rampant in our country and in our world. Perhaps it's influenced by blogging, by texting, by talk radio, by reality TV for the for-profit news industry. But people tend to speak first and think later if they think at all. And the negativity and the toxicity becomes just poisonous to the human soul. There's a spirit of distrust and dishonesty, this pervasive and public discourse, including media, social media, and especially political rhetoric. But third, not only is there grief, not only is there this toxic negativity, there's a spiritual restlessness, even among people who've been devout Christians for years. Sometimes it's because they're rethinking their faith, which could be extremely healthy. But other times it's because they are wallowing in the doubts of the age. They're those who are ho-hum about their faith in God. They see God as one to be appeased, as a senile old deity waiting to be manipulated or controlled. Rather than seeing God as the fountain of wisdom, the source of all love, and the spring of good cheer and optimism. They have a distorted image of God. Well, we need this positive attitude and the spirit of good cheer to be true to scripture for a positive attitude a spirit of cheer and sometimes even a healthy dose of laughter are the best medicines for both the heart and the soul good cheer for most of us is not our default emotion when things become silent and settled and we're alone our default emotion can be melancholy it can be depression it can be negativity and so good cheer has to become a part of our discipline or the negativity will take over there's some of us here who need to be reminded very specifically about the need for good cheer maybe you're here this morning and you're dealing with a deep sense of grief that borders on depression and your loss is so heavy you just don't know if you can carry it anymore or maybe you're here this morning and you're in a season of caregiving for a family member or a loved one, and you just feel depleted all the time. Or maybe there's someone here who's in a battle that involves radiation or chemotherapy or medical infusions or dialysis or rehabilitation, and just the in and out of the doctor's office is enough to wear you out. And there's some here who have extraordinary stress at work or at home or at school or even at church. 
And there are others who just emotionally were all over the map. We're dealing with that deep sense of melancholy. We have a heightened sense of stress and anxiety. And sometimes we might even say that depression has dropped anchor in our soul and is keeping us from moving on. Although the writer of Proverbs is very real, we cannot control our circumstances. He's also very, very urgently reminding us that we can control our attitude toward those circumstances. There are two or three things I think that are helpful in us taking this good medicine for the heart and soul. First of all, it's reminding ourselves that God has a spirit of healthy humor and good cheer. I don't want to go into areas way beyond any expertise I have, but I do know enough about language to know that the word humus and human and humor all come from the same root word. And there's something about humus, the dust of the ground, and being human, composed of that dust, and having a sense of humor, being able to look at our predicament in good cheer that are all interconnected. And the source of our being human emanates from God himself. And sometimes we think of God being so serious and so disappointed with humanity that we fail to remember that all through scripture there are times that God smiles, God weeps, God cares, God celebrates, and God laments. Grady Nutt used to say, if you don't believe God has a sense of humor, go look in the mirror. Well, I was in a revival at First Baptist Williamsburg, because I think I shared this with you, uh, Williamsburg years ago, and one of the retired history professors came up to me, and, and his son was now teaching on the faculty, and we'd had a great service, the church was, was packed, the music was wonderful, and I'd shared a couple of stories that had literally happened when I first moved to Kentucky, and they were of a humorous nature, and people coming through said, oh, I know that person you told, I know that, we've lived in Kentucky all our, and they were just celebrating with me the stories I told, and along comes the retired history professor in Mississippi, and he pointed to this young man, that was a good sermon, except for one thing, you should never put humor in sermons. Don't you know God doesn't have a sense of humor? <laughs> and I wanted to say, maybe your God doesn't, my God does. But I realized it was probably something about his age or disposition. His son was two or three people behind me who came along and said, my dad's a wonderful guy, but don't pay any attention to anything he says. <laughs> but God does have a sense of humor. And God's sense of humor is what gets us through some of the most difficult times of life. How could the God who created beggar lice and cockerburros and kudzu not have a sense of humor? And look at all the times in scripture where God speaks with humor. There's hyperbole in the teachings of Jesus. Paul himself had an experience I've never had. While I've had people go to sleep in my sermons, I've never had anyone go to sleep while I was preaching and fall out the window and people <laughs> think they were dead. These stories are included in scripture because they are such a reality of life. God has a healthy sense of humor and a spirit of good cheer and wants us to do the same. One other quick story that I may have shared with you before, but it's one I'll never forget. I'd gone to Kentucky, by the way, and this, I think this was a story I told at the revival at Williamsburg. I'd been at Kentucky about six months, First Baptist Church of Corbin, wonderful church. The building was a very colonial structure that looked like the First National Bank in my hometown of Jacksonville, Alabama. The church was a wonderful group of people and uh, I was in the hall one day, I'd gotten to know the, the, the secretaries and all of this and been there enough to make myself at home. And there were strangers coming down the hall. And when I stopped, I said, can I help you? And they said, can you tell us where they keep the bodies? <laughs> and I was baffled for a moment, like, what do they mean? Where do you keep the bodies? So I said, wait right here. <laughs> and so I went in the office, said to the secretary, there's somebody in the hall that wants to know where do they keep the bodies? And she just broke into laughter. She said, oh, do, did nobody tell you that next door used to be the, the O'Neill funeral home? And the building looked just like this one, and they tore it down. They think this is the funeral home. <laughs> so I went out and was about to tell them the story that this was, this was the First Baptist Church, and it looks like the O'Neill funeral home. And I went back out and said, I had to ask inside, but if you want to see the bodies, they're here at 11 o'clock Sunday morning in that room <laughs> right over there. And they looked at me and I said, I'm sorry, I'm the new pastor here. I just learned 
there used to be a funeral home next door. Well, sometimes when people come in church, it's like they're in for a viewing of the bodies. When actually what gives us life is the good cheer and the refreshing humor that emanates from the very being of God. A cheerful disposition contributes to overall good health. Joseph Addison loved to say cheerfulness is the best promoter of health and is as friendly to the mind as to the body. And Grady Nutt also loved to say, and I'll never forget what he told us when we were freshmen in college, laughter is the hand of God on the shoulder of a troubled world. Proverbs 15.30 adds to this passage from Proverbs 17.22, and it says a cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Good news makes for good health. Laughter lowers the cortisone levels in the body. It suppresses the uh, immune system. It lowers levels uh, that enhance the work of the immune system and prevents uh, disease. In terms of exercise, you get, according to Norman Cousins, the same benefit from laughing 100 times a day that you get from 10 minutes of rowing in a canoe. In other words, this whole spirit of good cheer is good for us. Norman Cousins called laughter inner jogging. Well, the third and not least important, maintaining a positive attitude gives us strength in troubling times. To remain positive during troubling and challenging times is difficult. It's easy to maintain a good spirit of cheer when everything's going your way, but what about when times turn difficult? Good cheer, according to Orison Martin, is a great lubricant that oils all the machinery of life. And Mark Twain reminds us the best way to cheer yourself up is to invest in cheering someone else up, restoring them to a spirit of good cheer. Two quick stories will rapidly rush toward the conclusion. If you've been watching any of the British Open, you've probably heard this story, but last week... There was a golfer who didn't know he was going to get in, and he happened to be from Alabama. Graduated Gardendale High School, played on the University of Alabama golf team. Trey Mullinax won the Barbasol Championship last weekend, so he didn't know until Sunday afternoon that he was going to get to go to St. Andrews and play the historic old course for the British Open, a great accolade. He didn't even have his passport with him at the tournament, so the PGA Tour flew him home to get his passport and then back to JFK to fly over to St. Andrews. The problem is when he got there, when he went to retrieve his clubs, they had been open for inspection. And with all respect for those who work for the airlines, Trey Mullinax looked down and they didn't lose his clubs, but they didn't put them back in the bag. And when they opened the hard case, the clubs were laying out in the open and they were bent. They were the only clubs he had and he was about to tee off at 1.30 at the British Open. And he had a choice, fuss, feud, go buy new clubs, or put a smile on, do the best he could with what he had. He played the first round with bent clubs. He and his caddy bent them back into shape the best they could. The second day he played and he did okay, but he wasn't playing nearly as well as he was last weekend, but the first two days he played well enough to make the cut. The third day his putts were a little off, he missed four right by the hole, and when they measured they discovered that the putter was bent and it had been two degrees off the entire tournament, so they reset the putter going into Saturday. And he finished yesterday in 18th place going into the Sunday round, playing with bent clubs. That has to be a parable for life. i got to tell you, if I were going to get to play the British Open and the airline bent my clubs, we'd be having a come-to-Jesus session. <laughs> But I went back and watched the tape after I read the story, and he was all smiles on the course. He was glad to be there, and he took what he had and took the best he had and used it to do the best he could and ended up with a great result. And there are times in life when unfair things happen, and the clubs and the resources we use in life just get bent out of shape. And we can give up and go home, or we can do the best we can with what we have. Something odd happened a couple of weeks ago. We were in a meeting with one of our attorneys, and I got ready to leave the meeting with leaving the parking deck. As I was leaving, I noticed his hood up, and his car battery was completely dead. I wasn't even sure I had jumper cables in my car. They had been there for so long. So he opened the hood of his car, and I went to put the jumper cables on. And I looked, and I found the negative post right away. 
but his car is one of the newer additions and you could not see the positive post and we pulled out every handbook we could. I was Googling online on my phone because you can't jump a battery without connecting the cables to both the negative and the positive. And we finally found the positive post and we were able to connect it. We were talking about that while waiting. Why can't you just connect one wire and it works? It's because somehow the energy is generated between the polarities of the positive and the negative and his car wouldn't start until he owned or connected to both. And life is like that sometime. We can see the negative right away, but we have to search for the positive. But it's the arc between the negative and the positive polarities of life that create the energy we need to be who we're called to be. And sometimes that arc is generated by the attitude with which we address those very polarities. Maintaining a positive attitude gives us strength in the most troubling of times. In other words, to summarize, cheerfulness and humor help us keep life in perspective. Jimmy Buffett, one of my favorite songwriters, says it takes no more time to see the good side of life than it does to see the bad side of life. But long before Jimmy Buffett was even born, Henry Ward Beecher said, a person without a sense of humor is like a wagon without springs. It's jolted by every pebble on the road. Maybe that's the reason the writer of Proverbs said, a relaxed attitude and a cheerful heart lengthens a man's life. In your lifetime, and my lifetime, we'll have to deal with all kinds of changing emotions and all kinds of unpredictable circumstances with the fear of the unknown and the frustration of the unknown, and yet approach all these circumstances with cheerfulness and humor, which will help us keep life in focus. So maintaining a cheerful heart is what keeps us going at times. One final story. There's only two or three accolades I have that are probably unique to my ministry, Susan. One of those is I'm the first pastor I know that took a Baptist senior adult group to a popular pub in Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> it was in the mid to late 90s, and we were there prepared to go into the Bull and Finch pub. Does that ring a bell? Have you been there? It was the inspiration for the TV show Cheers. And many of these senior adults had been watching Cheers. The year before, I'd taken them to Dallas, so I took them to watch an episode of Dallas being filmed live at the South Fork Ranch. So the next year, I went to New England. I took them to the Bull and Finch pub to see where Cheers was, uh, was birthed. And as we were leaving, one of them said, the church needs to be more like Cheers. I said, what do you mean? They said, first, it needs to be a place where everybody knows your name. And then they said, Pastor, for some people, cheers is the last thing people think of when they go to church. Maybe God is calling us at Wayuka to be the church of good cheer. And that the good cheer we have because of our faith in Christ becomes the good cheer and encouragement that's contagious throughout this community. Jesus himself was called the great physician, a doctor for the heart, mind, and soul. Jesus is the one who forgives our sin, who loves us unconditionally, and who believes in us when we no longer believe in ourselves. Maybe you're at a point in your life where you're ready to put your faith and trust in him. And you'd like to become one of his followers and join his church. We'd love to have that conversation with you. Our staff members will be available following the service, or you can text the word JOIN to the number on the screen, or call the number at the top, and one of our ministers will get back with you immediately following the service. As we sing and celebrate our faith and offer our prayer of commitment, let's stand and sing these words along with Rick. i 
sing those words again, the King of Love. The King of Love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. And where Streams of water flow, my ransom soul he leadeth, and where the thriving pastures grow with food celestial feed. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Rick. Thank you to uh, each of you who are here with us today, either in person or online to worship. We are glad you've been here, and to our guests, we're especially glad that you've joined us with us today. Before we depart, just a few words of announcement and things that are coming your direction that we want you to know about. Uh, first is our continued support of Ukraine. Uh, we support the CBF field personnel, uh, Mina and uh, Mina and Gennady Podgaisky, who are returning hopefully next week. And they are asking for a collection of supplies, which you can see on the screen. And we are doing this uh, quicker than we expected because we didn't know they were going back so quickly. But we're going to receive what we can, and then we will hopefully do another collection in August uh, that will also be uh, to go to them. But please, if you have questions, let me know. Uh, we will receive those in the office or the bins around the church. We also have, uh, as Angie's already mentioned, we have our Kids Adventure Weekend. This is Waiuka's own version of Vacation Bible School. And so this is a significant part of our summer, and we're grateful to Angie and her team and the work they've already done. And so hopefully you have some children or grandchildren or neighbors that you will invite and encourage them to come and be with uh, Angie and these leaders on Thursday through uh, Sunday. The youth who've just returned are going back out again. They're going to uh, go to the Chattahoochee, and that'll be next Wednesday, the 27th. Ashley can give you more information about that. Ladies Bible study will be on the 28th of next week. And then our Wednesdays will continue this Wednesday as we will gather uh, for our Bible study and for our gathering at 5.30 as well for dinner and then for our evening program. Also of note, we have our next community night, which will be uh, the slide that was just up there. The community night will be on the 29th. Thank you. Can remember the date. It'll be on the 29th from 7.30 to 10.30. We're going to do movies. We're going to have popcorn. We're going to have a food truck. So please come on out. We're going to watch uh, the movie, thank you, Inside Out. I wanted to say a different movie, and I knew that wasn't right. Inside Out. So come and see it. It's a great movie about dealing with your emotions. We all have emotions. Sometimes we deal with them great. Uh, so hopefully you'll come join us. We'll be on the play field. Uh, Keep in mind all these things, hold them in prayer. We hope to see you as often as we can, and thank you for the ways that we all serve this community. Now will you stand as Dr. Howard comes to lead us in our benediction. Thank you, Josh. And as we're standing, let me share with you that, uh, again, thank you for your faithfulness. We knew that June and July were going to be heavily traveled. But let me share with you that as we begin to wind down for the summer, we're looking for a really big crowd next week as we share Kids Adventure Weekend and many families are with us. A couple of weeks after that is Back to School Sunday. We're inviting after school, day school, and uh, some of our friends from our partner school at Cross Keys High School. We're going to be putting out extra chairs looking to overflow here in the Peachtree Room. So we're looking forward to several good weeks. It's a great time of the year to invite a friend or neighbor to be with you. May God grant you a great afternoon. Join me for our benediction. Don't forget the Rise Again celebration of Pastor Appreciation Day begins here at 2 o'clock. Let's pray together. Our good and gracious and cheerful God, send us from these moments of worship to share your love and grace with all whom we come in contact and help us to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, and the voice of encouragement, especially in times like these. For we pray together in a spirit of gratitude and in the name of Jesus, who's both our encourager and our friend. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.